about four years ago, I was working for five pound fifty four pence an hour. Now, some of you watching this video may be in a similar situation where you worked for this kind of money. But at the time, working for this kind of money, I was 16 years old. My work would be about a 30 minute drive away. So I would drive to the mail centre that I worked at. I worked at this big like warehouse mail centre with like all these yorks and all these belts with parcel sorting machines. So it would take me about 25 minutes to 30 minutes to commute to work. I would then work for about six to eight hours at £5.54 an hour in this mail centre. And then I would come home. Now what I didn't mention was that this six to eight hours at £5.54 was a night shift. So I'd leave my house at 11.30pm. I would get to my workplace at around 12, so midnight. And then I would finish when the sun came up at 6, 7, 8 a.m. I would drive home and my eyes would be burning because my because I was so tired and the shift had just been so draining. Now don't get me wrong, it wasn't the worst job in the world. I have a bit of gratitude for that job because firstly I was allowed to have headphones in. So I learnt a lot. I would listen to podcasts for five, six hours and just consume information which taught me loads, which I'll always be grateful for. However, what it also taught me was that I never ever want to work a job like that ever again in my life. And a lot of you watching this video and a lot of youngsters will not know what that, that experience is like. You'll not know what getting up at 11 p.m. And then commuting to work. The mental energy, the mental strength that it takes to know that you've got to get up at 11 p.m. as a 17 year old, commute to work, work for hours, drive home in the a.m.s in the morning while the sun is coming up. And you know, you see, like, if you, if you have mates that are like builders or contractors and stuff, they'll be going to work at 7, 8 a.m. while you're coming home and trying to get some sleep in. And if you've ever worked a night shift or an overnight job, then you know exactly what I mean by saying that it fucks you up. My hormones, my my brain, my thinking power was just completely messed up. I would have a break for 30 minutes halfway through my shift and I was kind of getting on self-improvement on all this um, like productive stuff at this point. So I'd take a book with me. I remember, bro, sitting down on my first, or one of my first shifts, and I went to the canteen, and I pulled my book out to read, and I remember I just couldn't read. Now, the job itself was kind of zombifying, because no one would speak to you, there'd be just a bunch of old people around you, and you'd sort of go a bit crazy, I'm not going to lie. It was just a case of, if you've ever worked in a mail centre, then you will know exactly what I'm talking about. This would be funny for you. But if you don't understand, then you basically just have like postcodes and stuff. So in the US, you have zip codes. I don't know about mail centres in the US. But in the UK, you'll have postal codes and you get like a pile of just letters and stuff. And you kind of read the postal codes and just put them in like the individual pigeonholes. And it sounds okay, it sounds easy, which it was. But after hours and hours of doing that, fries your brain man so i'd go to the canteen halfway through try and read and i literally could not read i didn't have the brain power to read and then once the shift was over you know it was kind of one of those shifts where you'd be constantly looking at the clock you'd be like ah oh, it's only 4 a.m fuck it's only it's only 5 a.m i still got two hours of this shit and i did this for weeks bro weeks and weeks and weeks at 
17 years old working for minimum wage and night shift for minimum wage one time i drove home from this night shift i think it was about 6 30 a.m and i remember bro my eyes were just burning they were absolutely burning my head was fried my eyes were burning and i had to go on the motorway to get home and i'm not going to go into detail but it was like scary times driving alone uh, on the motorway when you haven't had sleep is kind of it's kind of a dangerous thing and you may be thinking well what was the point of this story you know, you've, you've told me you've worked a night shift at 17 year, years old for less than six pounds an hour, but what is the actual point of this story? Well, the point of this story is I see it a lot these days with younger, younger kids because my brother is like 16 years old and I see it a lot with him and his friends. So I can actually relate to you younger boys. You need to do something. You need to put yourself out there and do something that will actually push you to the edge or push you out of the edge of your comfort zone. And then you will realise kind of what you want to do. So for me, I would work these night shifts and I'd also work with my grandfather doing like labouring jobs and, you know, digging like ditches and doing drain work and doing these sort of stuff at such a young age. While I hated it at the time, absolutely hated it, I have a lot of gratitude for these jobs because they showed me that that is not what I want to do. It gives you inspiration to show, okay, I don't want to do that. And maybe, bro, you'll work these night shifts at a mail centre or you work a labouring job and you'll enjoy it and you'll think, I want to do this for the rest of my life, which is, you know, completely fine. Do what, do what you love, do what you want to do. But actually put yourself out there, do some different jobs, do some tough shit. And then you will realise that, okay, I don't want to do this. And it'll actually start to fire up something inside you to be like, okay, I promise myself that I'm not going to do this. And once you make that promise of yourself, that's the hardest promise to break. You know, you can go around telling other people about this promise, how you don't want to work jobs like this, or how you have bigger ambitions. If you're someone who's watching this video or watched previous videos of mine, then I'm assuming you're a young man with high ambitions for success. But honestly, I can say from first-hand experience, if you haven't been in the trenches, literally and metaphorically, and you haven't worked a grueling job or done a grueling, you know, month period of, of something you absolutely hate, something you have a mental battle with every single day to get up and go, so that it actually makes you physically cry. Then I think you're going to find success a lot tougher than the rest of the rest of the people. Now, this is not to say to go and waste your life away doing stuff you hate. But I do truly, honestly believe that if you can get some experience in something that you absolutely hate, just for a small period of time, just to boost that fire inside you. And like for me, when I was saying the mail center job, it was kind of a perfect job for me because while I hated the job and I hated the people around me and I saw all these like older men in their forties and fifties and they just looked absolutely lifeless. Like they were physically there, but I could, I looked in their eyes, I could see in their eyes that they were just dead. And once you see this sort of stuff, it kind of, for me anyway, it kind of just like sparked this, this fear of, okay, I don't want to be like this. Okay, I don't want to do this. And a lot of young men out there haven't had this sort of experience, haven't had the, haven't had the, you know, <laughs> this, if they just don't, understand the toughness of it they don't understand the whole idea behind actually doing something tough and doing pushing yourself out of your comfort zone you know most people these days will just stay inside playing video games or you know go out with their mates to the pub and then come home and go to go to school or all this sort of stuff 
Like, I don't see a lot of young men these days actually pushing themselves, pushing their boundaries out. They'd rather just stay in their comfort zone. And everyone, every successful man knows, or everyone that's been on, like, a successful journey or trying to improve himself and know that if you stay within your comfort zone, then there is no room for growth in this comfort zone. You're only going to grow when you actually push yourself out of this comfort zone. You get uncomfortable. The more successful people spend most of their days outside their comfort zone every single day compounding what they do what makes them uncomfortable and they go and do that so the whole point of this video was to say that if you truly want to be successful and you're on a your path to self-improvement or you're thinking about self-improvement then i highly suggest doing something that you absolutely hate like your worst fear go and do it go and do it right now I know most of you won't because you don't take this sort of stuff seriously but for the small percentage of you who actually listen and will go and put yourself out there get out your comfort zone do something you hate for a short period of time just to spark that fire inside of you then there you you are the ones that are going to be successful now i believe in you i believe you can do this honestly i believe everyone out there can do this but I know not everyone will. So if you're in that small percentage who actually goes out and does something they hate, or they've already gone and done something they hate, and it sparked this motivation inside them to be like, okay, I do not want to do this for the rest of my life. I do not want to be like this person that I've seen doing this in their 40s and their 50s. Then DM me on Instagram. Uh, let me know your experience. I love hearing from you a lot. It's absolutely sick what we're building here. We're building a community. So go let me know on Instagram check the description and maybe even subscribe to the video so i can actually afford to get a trim <laughs> enjoy your day bro